Hello, this is Joe Reagan. This video is on basic sketching in SolidWorks. In SolidWorks, you will generally create three different file types. A part, in a part you would of course create a 3D model of a, you got it, part. An assembly where you would bring multiple parts together assign relationships so they orient properly with respect to each other, and drawings. Drawings are where you would create the 2D representation of your parts and dimension them for manufacturing or other purposes. We'll start by creating a part. Once the part template is open, you can go into Options and Document Properties and choose the units you would like to work in. I'm going to leave my units in inch, pounds, and seconds. Fundamental to most any feature in SolidWorks is the sketch. You must become a proficient sketcher to be good at modeling parts and assemblies in SolidWorks. To create a sketch, click on the Sketch tab and then select a plane to sketch in. I'd like to sketch in the front plane, so I'll click here. This brings up, this puts me into a sketch mode in that plane and notice when I click on a tool, it automatically orients me perpendicular to the, to the plane I'm sketching in. Sometimes it won't orient you perpendicular to that plane and you can use this button to orient yourself perpendicular to any plane. Okay, so I'm going to delete these entities that I created and I'm going to create a rectangle the long way by using lines. Okay, and you notice when I click on the line command I have some options over here. I can make an infinite length line. I can make the line for construction only. That's very valuable for constraining your sketch. These entities that would be for construction purposes would not show up as part of your surface or edges. They would simply be uh, lines created for reference at the sketch level. You can force the lines to be horizontal, vertical, or at some given angle. I'm going to leave it as sketched and click, and I'm going to drag to the right. And notice if I drag almost horizontal, anywhere close to horizontal, a, an indicator comes up, the little yellow indicator. If I click with the little yellow indicator now as a vertical line, it will create a vertical relationship denoted by the green indicator there or handle. If I happen to click off the horizontal, notice that there's no horizontal indicator there. And then I'll come and I'll close the profile by connecting this endpoint there. Now Likely I wanted this to be a true rectangle so I can come back and I can force this line to be horizontal. So I'll select the line and notice when I select the line the property manager comes up and I can add a relationship and force that line to be horizontal. Okay, I'll escape, select the other line and force it to be vertical. Okay, now I have a rectangle I'll add some dimensions to it, working toward having a fully defined profile. So I'll let this be a one inch leg and this be a three inch. Now the size and shape of my rectangle is fully defined, but the placement is not. You can see this because I can still drag it. Okay. So I will right click, select midpoint, 
control and select the right plane and I want these to be coincident and then I'll do a similar operation on this line right click select midpoint and then control and select the top plane and force those to be coincident. Now notice once the geometry is fully defined, fully constrained, the geometry changes from blue to black, indicating it's fully constrained. Okay, if I ever need to come back and change a dimension, it's I just simply double click on the dimension and I can change it and it will update. It's important to be smart with the way you constrain your sketches so that when you make modifications that you might want to make in the future, the model grows or shrinks or changes the way you expect it to. For example, let's say that I also had holes in the plate. Okay, and I want all these holes to be the same size, so I'll control select each hole and make them equal. Now, one dimension will drive the size of each hole. So I'll let this be 0.375. Notice all four holes change size at the same time. Um, I want these holes to be aligned, so I'll control select. I need to make sure to select the center. And make these horizontally aligned. And then I'll control select these make them vertically aligned and I'll control select these make them vertically aligned okay at this point I need to decide how I would expect this I want this model to modify if for example I change this to 3 do I want these holes to stay a certain distance from this edge? Do I want the part to remain symmetric? These are questions I need to answer and think about as I'm constraining the model. I'm going to assume that the model should be symmetric always, so I will use some construction lines. So I'll go to line, and I want lines for construction. I'm going to go from center to center. Oops, let's try that again. I clicked on the wrong point for construction. I have to be sure and click on the points very deliberately. Okay, so there's line center to center. And now I can right click this construction line, select midpoint, control, select the origin here and make these vertical. Okay, escape, right click, select midpoint, control, select the center and make those aligned horizontally. Okay, and now a couple dimensions and we should have a fully constrained sketch. Notice now all the geometry is black. I'll hit this button to zoom to fit and we have a fully constrained sketch. And if I change one of the dimensions the 
part will remain symmetric. Okay, uh, another way that I might have wanted to constrain this, I might want to keep a certain distance off the edge. So let's delete this dimension and let's drive it with, let's say, this dimension. Okay, and let's change that to 0.5. And notice now when I change the width of the plate, say to five, it will shift the model appropriately. When I've completed a sketch, I can simply return from the sketch. Now I can use this sketch to create some real geometry, some solid geometry. The simplest sol solid geometry to create would be an extruded boss or base. So if I click here, it asks me for the reference uh, sketch. And so here's my profile. And it's at this phase, it's asking me what depth I would like to extrude it. I'm going to change it to a mid-plane so that it is extruding equidistance in both directions from the plane that we sketched in. And we'll make it one inch thick and finish. And we've created a simple block with four holes. I hope this helps you get started working in SOLIDWORKS. Be sure and test your sketches as you move along to make sure that they behave the way you would want them to when you make changes. Thank you.